The Brickyard 400 is back in 2025, but the future is a little murky. Plus, NASCAR makes some major changes to their overall leadership. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. On Thursday morning, Doug Bowles, the president of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, went on to Sirius XM NASCAR radio and talked about the Brickyard 400, which, of course, returns to the Oval this coming weekend on Sunday for the 30th anniversary of the Brickyard 400. And he mentioned that it hasn't been formally announced yet, but that the Brickyard 400 will once again return in 2025. The Cup cars and Xfinity cars, for that matter, will continue to race on the Oval for a second consecutive year after doing that three-year stint on the Indianapolis road course. How However, he did say that there could possibly be a scenario where they alternate, where one year they're on the oval, one year they're on the road course. And I'll be completely honest, the same way that Roman doesn't want to go back to Barstow. I'm not going back to Barstow. So I do not want to go back to the Indianapolis road course, especially with the Gen 7 NASCAR Cup Series car. It has been absolute boredom for the two years that they ran on the road course with that car. I will say 2021 was interesting, right? AJ Allmendinger gets a surprise win after half the field gets taken out in that backstretch chicane when the curbs came up. That was the only thing that kind of spiced that up. But if it was a Gen 6 car, I would be like, okay, maybe we race on the road course. But the Gen 7 car, no, let's just stick to the oval. Plus, if you're going to race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, you might as well race on the oval, right? That's where all the fame comes from. That's the Indianapolis 500. And of course, the IndyCar faithful, the diehards, the ones that don't like NASCAR will tell you that nobody else should race on the oval other than the Indianapolis 500. And now I can see the argument behind that. I love the Indianapolis 500. It's my favorite race of the year. But if you're going to race there in your NASCAR, you have to race on the oval. The road course means absolutely nothing. It's not that good of a road course. It's a pretty boring race from what we've seen. I mean, heck, last year, it was so bad that Michael Mc... when Michael McDowell won that NASCAR was like, we got to put stages back in because this race was just too boring. I hate that because I think that, you know, road courses are better without stages, but to each their own. So the idea of returning back to the Oval for this year really sparked a lot of people's interest and the fact that it's with the Gen 7 car. We haven't seen this car on the Oval yet, so maybe it'll be good. Now, I will say, everybody should temper their expectations. It's not going to be an absolute barn burner. It's not going to look like 1994 or 1995. It is, in fact, probably going to look a lot like what we saw in 2020, 2019, 2018. If it gets wild like 2017, then heck, I think everybody's going to be happy about that. But for the most part, it's not going to be an absolute knockdown, showdown, 10 out of 10, top of the Jeff Gluck pole type of race. It's going to look a lot like Pocono, more than more than likely. Now, they could possibly be able to get some good runs, right? You have long straightaways there and, and passing opportunities into turn one and into turn three. So maybe, maybe. But if you're going to race there, you might as well race on the Oval. Plus, it's a crown jewel event. I don't want to go to the Indianapolis watch the road course. I've been there. I've seen it. I want to go to the Oval. I've been to the Oval. I'm going again this weekend. Hopefully, see you there. Rain Jacket's staying home. Rain Jacket is staying home. We're not taking it. It is cursed. Every race that has been to with me this year, it has rained. It will be staying home. But for them to go back to the road course, I think that's a step in the wrong direction. It's Oval or nothing. If you're not racing at the Oval, then... Take that date and move it somewhere else. Don't get me wrong. Indianapolis Motor Speedway is... Indianapolis is a great market, one for motorsports in general, NASCAR, IndyCar, both of them alike. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the most famous racetrack in the world. Of course, you want to be there. But if the cars don't put on a very good show on either version of the racetrack, it's hard to justify keep going back there. But again... I know here's what's going to happen this weekend. They're going to run the 30th anniversary of the Brickyard 400. There's going to be... I'm going to guess between 80 and 100,000 fans there. And then we're going to have to deal with all the fans that are talking about how empty the grandstands look because the Indianapolis Motor Speedway has 250,000 permanent seats at the racetrack, and NASCAR's just not going to fill that. They did it back in 94, 95, and probably all the way up until... I don't know when did it start to fall off mid 2000s real realistically when you used to be able to start noticing some of the uh, bare spots in the stands you're going to notice a lot this year I'm not even sure if they're selling grandstand uh, tickets uh, in turn three I, I could be wrong about that but I'm don't remember that being an option when I looked at the uh, when I looked at the ticket thing earlier so regardless Doug Bowles Happy to have the any happy to have NASCAR back on the oval. Brickyard 400 will be back again in 2025, which I think is a really good move. There, it is a crown jewel event. Let's establish it as that. Ignore the road course. Just get rid of the road course. I mean, heck, if you want to run the Xfinity on the road course and swap the track over, I can get behind that. Right? They've done it before, uh, 2020. So maybe that could be in play here. I just don't want to see them alternate. Don't want to see them go back and forth. So 
Stick on the oval. In other news that came out this week as well, NASCAR made some major restructuring changes amongst their leadership group. Steve Phelps, the president of NASCAR, will now have a bigger picture role within NASCAR, a role that allows him to focus on the strategic outlook globally and the global expansion of NASCAR properties, something that I think is an interesting aspect, right? We've heard talks about NASCAR expanding, you know, to other portions of the world, including Asia and the Middle East, possibly. So Steve Phelps is going to have a more broad view over top of that. Ben Kennedy will now now move from senior vice president to executive vice president at the age of 32. Of course, I think everybody kind of views him as the future leadership of NASCAR, assuming that the France family stays in control, which there's nothing to say that they won't. But Ben Kennedy now uh, appears to be moving up that ladder. His title will essentially be racing development and innovation. So basically everything that we've seen with the schedule, the new locations that we've gone to, all of the new fun things that we've seen NASCAR do over the last, I don't know, handful of years, last five years, four years at that, that has all been the result of Ben Kennedy. Kennedy, wanting to go out and try new things. The Clash, the Chicago Street Course, mixing up the schedule, getting rid of kind of that old stale schedule that we had, and going out to different venues. All of that has been spearheaded by Ben Kennedy, and I think that NASCAR is going in a really good direction following his ideas and his outlook. And like I said, I think that he'll eventually be the guy in charge of NASCAR. And when that day does come, I believe that the sport is actually in really good hands. I think Jim France is doing a fine job right there, but I think Ben has that young youthful ambition and he has some big ideas for NASCAR and if his ideas you know emulate what we've seen with the scheduling and sort of the direction that we've gone over the last four years I, like I said I think NASCAR is in a pretty good spot going forward uh, with him at the helm other things that changed around a little bit COO Steve O'Donnell OD Steve on Twitter everybody hounded him so much that unfortunately he doesn't get on anymore which is again uh, unfortunate because he did provide pretty good insight when he did tweet out you know things that were happening but Regardless, he now has literally everybody, it seems like, within the organization reporting to him. If you look through the Sports Business Journal article, uh, you name search his name, it comes up 10 different times. Nine of those times are because people are reporting to him now, which he has certainly taken on more of a workload there. And Steve has shown himself as a guy that can help steer NASCAR, at least on the operations side, in a good direction. I know people aren't happy about charter negotiations. They might not have, be happy about the Gen 7 format of this car. But in terms of leadership, this is the most robust and sound group of leadership NASCAR has had in quite some time. And I get it. It's not going to be a popular take of mine, but I do think that the people they have in place right now, both the men and women, have steered the sport in a better direction than it previously was underneath the old regime. And I think that is, again, a step in the right direction. Other changes include Tim Clark, who went from being senior vice president and chief digital officer to now being an executive vice president and chief brand officer. He will now oversee marketing and communications. And for the first time, NASCAR will have somebody overseeing both of those departments. He, of course, will work closely with the CMO, but I think that is, again, a great idea right there because communications and marketing working hand in hand to put out the same message is a step in the right direction. They've also included a number of other changes that you can go through. A lot of them are really in the weed stuff, stuff that won't necessarily affect things that fans see outward facing or anything like that. NASCAR's also started to work with an outside sales agency that will sell marketing, or not marketing, but rather sponsorship for them and have streamlined their sales process with in-house at least uh, the sports business journal reported uh you know a handful of layoffs didn't specify a number but said it was a small amount so i think nascar is making changes in the right direction now we'll just have to wait and see sort of how that plays out in the future so let me know in the comments what you think about going back to the oval in 2025 at indianapolis plus the changes that nascar made amongst their leadership like and subscribe to the channel follow me on tiktok at break hard instagram and twitter at break hard blog